Take two. We're continuing from the first part of the video and now that we're in the basement of the building that we just looked at outside, the first component we're going to look at is an AC DC AC inverter. Now if you recall the panels, the modules that were mounted outside the blue panel array, the two panels, are actually wired to this inverter that is changing the DC electricity into AC and then is fed directly into our grid power. So this is very simple how we can take our outside power Take the, change it from DC over to AC and then feed it into our meter as a way to reduce the energy that we're using at the building. Portable, some of them come in much larger sizes. This is a 240 watt inverter. The range in size is from 240 to 6,000 watts of power. Anything over 6,000 watts would then be two of them would be combined together to create a much larger load. So now we're going to go over and look at the secondary part of the water, domestic water heating system. From the outside, the panels are bringing the water temperature or propylene glycol, which is commonly used in Michigan for a hydronic fluid. We have a pipe going out and we have a pipe coming back. The cold water is, the loop is being circulated outside to be heated and then brought back into the building to be stored in the storage container. So the water starts circulating. When the water, when the panel temperature outside is 10, 20 degrees higher than the water that's in the storage tank, the tank pump starts to circulate. Now we're bringing the water temperature, the hotter water from outside to support the storage tank that's on the inside. So what we're going to do is we're looking to, uh, right now our circulating, the pumps are not circulating, but in our um, digital readout, we have 96 degree temperature in the tank, and we have 108 degree temperature outside. Now if you recall, we had no sun today, but I am measuring 108 degrees in the top panels outside. The reason the pumps are not circulating, there's not a 20 degree temperature difference between the two. When that panel is, it reaches up 20 degrees higher than 95 degrees, then that circulating pump will turn on. We do know that domestic water is coming into the building at 50 degrees and we are maintaining a temperature of 95 degrees in the storage container so that when the domestic water supply is calling for water we're not going to be putting 50 degree water back into the storage tank. We're going to be putting 95 degree temperature. So now from 95 degree temperature to 120 degree temperature requires very little energy to bring that water temperature up to 25 degrees in temperature. So there, that's a huge advantage. Um, very limited sun today. If this is an 80 gallon storage container, there are many types of tanks that can be used. Um, we prefer to use electric tanks. They are very easy to maintain, very inexpensive as a wa water storage container. So when we store the water into the storage container, there are two circulating pumps. One pump is circulating the water from the, the glycol from the outside to a heat exchanger that's on the inside. The heat exchanger water and the water the water in the tank and the water outside never touch each other. They are being separated by a heat exchanger where the tank is circulating the fluid that's in the tank and the secondary pump is circulating the fluid that's in the loop. So this is a closed loop system. We have two loops going. We have a loop that is driving the water from the solar collectors into the heat exchanger that is then exchanged into the tank and the secondary pump is circulating the pump tank simultaneously. When the pumps turn on, they both turn on, water in the, in the collectors is circulating, water in the tank is circulating, so we're transferring the hot energy from outside into the building. The other advantage of this water heating system is that we have the opportunity to use some of the excess energy in the winter time to be used for boiler water. The water again is coming in through the outside loop from outside and follows the path to two different heat exchangers. These are flat plate heat exchangers. Because we have a glycol, which is a non-toxic antifreeze, to glycol, we're not worried about 
um, contaminating the heat exchanger. Very difficult to control heat in a flat plate heat exchanger because water, groundwater, will contaminate the flat plate heat exchanger and clog it up and make it less efficient. We are using a glycol to glycol loop so there is no opportunity for minerals or crud to be built up into the heat exchanger. Now the heat that's created from the panels can then be brought into the building and then added to our boiler system which is an underfloor radiant heating system. Underneath our floor we have a tube that is 7 8 inches in diameter. It's a double wall plastic tube that is fastened to the ceiling by a heat transfer strip. When the water is circulated at 160 degrees through the building so we're supporting our underfloor radiant heating system with our outside domestic water heating system. And that will be it for now.